Hey YouTube, um, so please forgive me for doing yet another whiskey video. Um, I've done a bunch of whiskey videos and I really love to get back to brandy and rum and stuff like that. But, uh, and I know I, I just did uh, another video kind of just like this on Journeyman. Uh, basically I recorded that last week, so it'll be probably be going up like a week before this one does. Um, but I have a certain urgency to get this out. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So um, what I've got here is a sample pack from Sonoma Distilling in uh, Sonoma County, California. This is, where is this actually from? Uh, Roner Park. Um, I almost did not buy this, uh, this sample box. I, I bought a whole bunch of, of these little samplers right before Christmas because I thought it would be fun to run through them in these, these kinds of videos. This is the one that I picked up last, and I, I almost didn't do it. Um, I mean, the, 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 the logo looks fine. I mean, it's, it's lovely. It's very, um, you know, California gold rush. In, in fact, if anything, it's, it's almost too nice. It makes it look kind of almost too marketing-y. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's the, it has a fair amount of um, information on it. It does mention it's the, uh, their spirits are double pot distilled which is cool. Um, the bottles themselves have the mash bills right on them, which is cool. And they're all bottled at at least 46%, which is really cool. Um, but it was this, you know, it, it, none of them are marked as straight. So I always had, so I've had doubts about the aging. That's always uh, uh, been a little bit of an issue for me. And um, uh, uh, beyond that, um, I don't know, it, it's, it always looked like a little bit, oh, is this going to be like, you know, they just, some some guy kind of slapped something together in a warehouse somewhere and um, threw it in a barrel the size of a pipette and is now trying to sell this stuff to, you know, victims like me. I mean, that, um, and I started reading about it and apparently it was, uh, this stuff has been founded by a finance bro. Um, uh, so, you know, immediately I'm thinking, oh no, the guy who crashed Bear Stearns, I, he, Adam Spiegel probably didn't actually crash Bear Stearns, but you know what I mean. Um, this, this guy from a totally different field decided he would go out and, and start his own distillery because he thought, saw, thought it was an easy way to make money. And uh, it's, it's going to be god-awful stuff. And then I saw a video review where Eric Waite uh, basically trashed the, this bourbon. Um, and if you know Eric Waite, he's a, he seems like the sweetest guy in the world. I've never met him, but... Um, uh, that's as close to a trashing as I've ever, I've ever seen for him. So I put this off my list for a while. And then, um, I don't know why, but I decided to grab it anyways, because I was bored and why not? Um, and, uh, so I'm going to taste through the, these. Um, yeah, let's give this a little bit more. So what I've got here is their bourbon, uh, their rye. All these tasting sets are very similar. You'll notice they'll have they'll have bourbon, rye, and something else. Um, so we'll put the rye in there. In this case, the something else is a second rye, which is the cherry smoked rye. We'll get to that in a second. Um, all right. So I uh, after the journeyman uh, review uh, last week, where I was you know a little bit. Um, left unfulfilled um, by the journeyman options. I decided I would open, pop another uh, tasting case just for fun. And this is the one I picked because I figured, you know, even, you know, even if they're no good, um, you know, at least it'll be a, an opportunity for me to spread consumer information. I can talk about, you know, the warning signs if, if, you're, if your owner is, was previously in finance. Back, I, I, you know, I thought maybe I could tell something like that story. And that is not the story I'm going to tell. Let me add a little bit of water to these. Um, I'm not going to do the whole go through them neat and then with water. I'm just going to go uh, do one pass. Um, these don't really uh, open up that much with water. It's more time works works just as well. But um, I'm going to add just a t just a touch anyways to sort of help help the process along. Um, yeah, so. Well, let me let me just uh, go through my my tastings of of these things, which I had no uh, and no expectation for whatsoever. I was expecting these to be um, uh, not good. 
Um, let me put it that way. My, my expectations were in the basement. Okay, so Sonoma Bourbon Whiskey. This is interesting. Um, no indication of how old this is. It is not marked straight. Uh, they're not, I, I haven't seen any information on the, the barrel sizes they're using. But they do provide the mash bill, which is 70% uh, corn, 25% wheat. This is a weeder. 5% uh, malted barley. And again, it is double pot distilled, which is what makes it a little bit unique as an option. It's also bottled at 46%. Um, not too expensive either. This, this retails for about 40 bucks for a full bottle anyways. Um, on the nose. Very, very unbourbon like Let's start with that. Um, so my, 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 uh, I haven't checked any other reviews and I watched the, the, um, Eric Waits, like, I don't know, probably four or five months ago. Um, but I would, I would be shocked if, you know, when you actually looked for other reviews beyond mine of these things, if you didn't see words like immature, uh, pop up and phrases like, um, will be nice to revisit after a few more years, things like that, because this does not smell like a wood dominant bourbon at all. I mean, the, the wood is um, not quite an afterthought. You can tell it's there, um, but it is not running the show. What is running the show is the distillate. Um, and what we're really getting here is, it's very orange, Frank. I mean, it's, it's orange dominant. It smells, it smells quite citrusy. So we're getting orange sherbet, orange zest, orange pith, like all, all the orange stuff, uh, very dis distinct um, uh, notes uh, for each of them though. There's a little bit of like a, like a, it doesn't smell like traditional oaky notes. It smells like hardwood chips. Like um, you got like oak chips, that you, like you're about to start a smoker, but you haven't got it started going yet. Um, got like some apple wood chips, some cherry wood chips. Um, speaking of cherry, there's a little bit of kirsch in here. Um, some dusty attic note. There's some tea notes. A kind of um, like an earl gray kind of kind of note with a spritz of lemon in there. Um, it's a little bit green too. There's there's um, there's like an, some asparagus stalks in there. Um, kind of just like a what is that? Something dusty. Something. Um, but it's not like attic dust. It's more like you know, a forest dust or something like you're in, you're in the forest and there's sort of, you know, um, leaves and stuff all the way around and you just kick up a big old cloud of dust. That kind of, that kind of nose. A little bit of, of dried grass with, um, some dandelions mixed in. I mean, there, there's a ton of different stuff going on in this nose. It's very, very dense. Um, so gra dr grass, but, but floral glass, grass, Glass. Um, the wood is there, but you have to go looking for it. Um, a little bit of light black pepper, still those those tea notes. I think that's the wood. A little bit, maybe a little bit of, the, of that Kirsch thing is the wood, but it is you know operating behind the curtain here. It's it's there's some pickled ginger going on. That it's. I mean, this is this is wonderfully layered. There's some pine. Like uh, like a like you chop down a pine tree. There's some fresh pine wood in here. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Um, um, if if you are a fan of you know old school woody woody bourbons, if you you know want your 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 Blantons and your E. H. Taylors and your Stag Juniors and all, you leave the room. Like this is you will not like this. Um, at least, well, you might like this, but I mean, not in that way. Um, it's just a, it's a totally different kind of character. Okay, on the palate, I've, I've talked enough about the nose. Man. I like being surprised. Um, lots of things going on on the palate. Again, we're carrying over that that orangey uh, uh, theme. The orange is, is dominant again, like on the nose, but there's lots of other things going on too. The black pepper uh, that was more subtle on the nose is is here in force. 
The Earl Grey tea is back with it with again with the spritz of lemon. Um, the dried grass thing is back. Uh, less floral on the palate than it was on the nose, though. Um, there's some. There's okay, okay. No, hang on. There's a little like like burned coconut thing going on. Okay, now the oak is there. Still very restrained. This did not spend a lot of time in a barrel. Um, there, but along with that, there's like some candle wax. There's some camphor. Um, a little citronella candle. If you just pick that up and like chew on it for a little bit. Um, some wood tannins. Uh, like wood, tea-like wood tannins, um, uh, but it's all shot through with that orange note, with like a like a, you know, put, give me some Cointreau or something mixed in with my Earl Grey and all those other notes. Um, also mildly green, less asparagus, more like stewed spinach. Um, that Kirsch note is is still here. Oh man. Um, okay, no, I lied. It is, it is actually kind of floral. It's just all the, the floral character is very concentrated. Um, doesn't, I'm having trouble describing this. Um, moving on, uh, concentrated floral character. Let's go with that. Uh, something tobacco. There's like a, not Virginia, this is burly. This is very nutty, um, kind of grungy tobacco. Um, there's a little bit of like a, a like a mint eucalyptus note. Ovaltine, and then on the finish in particular, there's um you know the sauce they give you for peking duck? That's sort of whatever the hell that is. That is a distinctive flavor characteristic in this. And it's it's great. I mean this is uh, this is a really, really nice bourbon, but I have, let me try this one more time. I'm stunned, um, by how good this is. Uh, so I'm going to give this a score. It will be a high score, but do, do not, do not listen just the score. Listen to what I am saying. Um, I spoke in some other video about why it's so important for occasionally uh, uh, wine reviewers to talk about things being correct and incorrect for a style, a grape, whatever. Um, this is an this is a terrific spirit. It is incorrect as a bourbon. This is not something I would ever send a, a traditional bourbon drinker to to enjoy unless they were adventurous. Or put it this way: this is this is a bourbon in the same way that that like Chablis is a Chardonnay. Do you get what I mean? This is just a totally different example of what you can do with the style. This is very distillate driven. It's very sour. It's very citric. It's driven by um, acidity and a slight green character and tea character rather than those sort of sweety, oaky kinds of notes. Um, it's not even that spicy, really. It's it's just a, a different set of, 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 um, of flavors. And I really like it. I would give this an 86 out of a hundred. Um, very well made. Uh, uh, who knew? Um, well done Sonoma. All right, let's move on. So we've got uh, the bourbon out of the way. Let's go to their rye. Now this is a hundred percent rye. Uh, we've done this before with the, um, uh, oh, a couple of, a couple of other um, ryes. Um, this is 80% uh, unmalted rye and 20% malted rye. This is bottled at 46.5%, so they're giving you a extra 5% alcohol, 0.5% alcohol, sorry, over the bourbon. Why? I have no idea, but uh, thank you. Um, all right, so all of these presumably bottled uh, around 2020, I'm not really sure. Um, so on the nose, I mean, even more dense and complicated than the bourbon, if anything. Um, doesn't have that clear, orangey, sour, citric note. This is more kind of a cherry, 
pie, rhubarb pie kind of thing mixed with uh, like a maybe like a dusty library. There's some wood and old books and leather. Um, Earl Grey again, no lemon this time. Um, and something that, that puts me in mind of old Calvados. There's, um, there's like a funky floral, apple-y, oaky note in there. Although the oak is not that, for, the oak is really tying itself with the other, up with the other flavor notes more so than sort of standing out on its own. Um, that is wild. There, it, there, so we're not talking about like like uh, column still Calvados here. We're talking about the uh, Paydage stuff, the uh, the pot distilled stuff. You know, twenty year old Paydage is is kind of what I'm getting here. Um, like uh, that floral thing again, the, like a handful of dried flowers, some some peppercorns mixed peppercorns there's some 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 black ones there's some pink ones in there um uh plum eau de vie uh if you've ever had that this that's that's kind of a note in here there's a little bit of like an old sweat sock thing going on which is great um it's something else something um kimchi this smells like kimchi. Uh, oh, it really does. Actually, it really does. This smells like just like kimchi. But you, if you sort of like smothered it in, in rhubarb pie, um, that makes no sense. But that's kind of what I'm getting on the nose. Uh, some, but some, some of those, um, the hardwood chips I mentioned from the bourbon, those are back. The oak chips, the um, maybe a couple of maple chips along with the cherry chips and the, uh, the applewood chips. Um, maybe like a hint of like mesquite in there too. Just, just a little, a little bit. Um, and now that I'm giving it some time, there is actually a little bit of like an or a little orange zest coming out too. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of converging on the bourbon. Uh, and there's like a, but there's a interesting, like smoky, grainy thing going on too. Like you set a bowl of muesli on fire, um, but then you threw some like sprigs of mint on top of that. This is very complex, dense stuff. I don't know how what the hell they're doing. I mean, they're pot distilling it, right? But it it feels like maybe they're doing something special with fermentation. Like maybe this is fermented longer, or they've just got some really wonky yeast. Um, I don't know, but whatever it is, it is it's, it's working. Um, on the palate, oh, very spicy. Kind of falls from the nose, actually. Um, so you're getting a big black peppery kick. Uh, quite spicy. The kimchi is still there. Um, Earl Grey is still there, on the finish more so than on the in the mid palate at the front. Um, clove, rhubarb pie, kind of some nutmeg maybe. Mm. That orangey note, but it's not. What is that? It's not overt orange. It's more like orange eau de vie or something. Although that sounds, sounds like. Distilling orange sounds like a bad idea, but that's kind of what this, the impression, like orange spirit somehow. Hirsch again, though, too. More tea. Um, oh, what, and something, this is reminding me of, of like Korean food, Chinese food somehow. Um, there's like a hoisin sauce note. That old Calvados note again, that sort of funky floral apple thing with a big hit of, of wood. By the way, the wood feels more here than it does on the bourbon, but neither one of these feels like a heavily wooded spirit or even a spirit where the wood is, you know, playing a leading role in the, in the flavor profile. There's like tons of little things going on. Um, some cherry wood smoke, although we're, we're getting, um, 
real deep into the cherry wood smoke on this next one. Um, a little menthol on the back end. That lots and lots of flowers, lots and lots of pepperiness, um, spicy kimchi stuff. Um, very edgy, very bright. Um, this is not, I mean, so I should step back and say and give you like a little bit of my bias as a reviewer. I love like, you know, sour acid driven white wines. I love a good Albarino. I love a good, um, you know, Poi Fumé. I love, you know, when a wine's going to step up and give me acid and minerality, that makes me really happy. And this is kind of reminding me of those. This is much more driven by by sour characteristics than it is by, you know, sweet characteristics or oak characteristics. Although those, those are in there providing a balancing role. Um, so, so again, I'm going to give this a high score. I'm going to give this an 87. I like this even more than I like the bourbon. But again, that's where the caveat is if, you know, a, a lot of traditional American spirits fans are not going to like this rye. Um, that being said, uh, I feel like, you know, rye drinkers tend to be a little bit more exper experimental anyway, so this more, may get more, more traction with that community. Um, let me try that one more time just to make sure. God damn. Rye from Sonoma. Who knew? Um, okay, last one. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of water. All right, this is uh, a little bit more expensive. Both of these are retail uh, about 40 for a full bottle. This is like 10 bucks more, maybe. Uh, this is the Cherry Wood Rye Whiskey, um, it's, which uses its own mash bill. 80% uh, rye, 10% wheat, and then uh, the 80% rye is unmalted. And then the 10% uh, the malted has been smoked with cherry wood. Um, so I imagine what they've done is, you know, they've, they've malted their rye as normal, sprinkled some water over it to get it, to, tr to trick it into thinking it's spring, and then to dry it out, instead of using peat, say, as you would in Scotland, uh, they've just used cherry wood smoke, um, which sounds fun. And this is bottled at 47.8% alcohol, uh, and, uh, let's give it a shot. So... But none of these have batch numbers, by the way, which is a little bit annoying. But, you know, but all these are 2020, let's say. Um, on the nose. Actually not as complex as the previous two. Uh, it's, it feels a little bit more focused, but at the same time a little bit more flat. Um, kind of think the cherry smoke is, is there. It's very subtle. This feels like, you know, cherry smoked cream of wheat or something like that. It's very grainy. Um, there's some old, old tea bags, like, you know, leftover, uh, tea bags from making, uh, uh, sun tea or something. Um, there's a little lemon note, like more lemon pith than, than the juice or the, or the zest. It's not, not, not as much going on with, with the previous two. Um, kind of an old moss note, like you're, you know, you're in the forest and you just pick up some moss and smell it. Some crushed rocks. You know, what pepper, white pepper, more so than black. Um, dry dust. Um, kind of some, um, well, the hardwood chips from the previous ones are still, are still there. The oak chips and the cherry wood chips and the, um, definitely the cherry wood chips and the, uh, um, applewood chips. Well, um, not the mesquite. A little and a little bit of um, bright leaf uh, Carolina pipe tobacco as well. It's very restrained. It's very modest um, on the palate. Okay. This one's actually easier to nail down than the previous two. Um, arrives quite sweet. Um, 
has some very heavy vanilla coconut shell things going on. I would not be surprised if this was actually aged um, or oaked, more heavily oaked somehow than the previous two. Um, yeah, kind of a vanilla, like, you know, take the inside of a coconut shell, toast it up, and then kind of, you know, like chew on it. Um, but then the, the finish is where, is where this gets fun because it closes on, I mean, just like cherry wood ash. So you're really taking the, the sort of form of a peated whiskey and, and swapping out the peat for, you know, cherry wood barbecue smoke. That's kind of what's going on. It's nice. Um, orange blossom honey, very honeyed actually, um, cream of wheat, kirsch again, this sort of, you know, um, yeah, cherry spirit, that's happening. Um, kind of some, some grassy, definitely a lot of grassiness actually. Freshly mowed grass. Um, more old tea bags, more leftover sun, sun tea, uh, you know, bags. Um, and there's a, there's a nice sort of, you know, along with the, the smoky hit on the end, there's a nice kind of oaky tannic snap. It's much more uh, traditional in lots of ways than these two. Um, except for the smoky thing. This one also has me thinking like like um, Asian food though. There's something there about this that reminds me of like, you know the, the dipping sauce for um, like sp spring rolls? You know, when you, you go to a Thai place and you get the spring rolls and there's that, like the very transparent sauce with like little bits of pepper floating around in it. That's kind of in here. Um, one more time. It's nice. Um, it actually feels more approachable than these previous two, but at the same time, more simple. It feels like the, I'm getting more wood. I'm not sure if there's actually more wood on it, but I'm getting more wood. And it feels like it's dumbed it down a little bit. Um, this has the form of a more, traditional kind of rye, except for that, that smoky, um, ashy, cherry, woody, barbecue smoke kind of hit at the end. Um, so even, but you know, even if I think this would hit more palettes, uh, I don't, you know, I would give this a, a shade less um, score than the previous two, just because these are so much, have so much more going on. Uh, I would give this an 85, uh, let's say 85 plus, I'll be nice. Um, hold on. Mm, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling that back. Let's just say 85, flat 85 on this. Um, yeah, something about the extra, the extra woodiness is kind of dumbing this a little bit. Um, it's still very, very good. Um, all of these are very, very good. Uh, and I am shocked, apparently, Sonoma County is uh, is the place to go in, is, is a place to go in American Spirits for making bourbons and rye. and who would have guessed? Um, so yeah, I, this is like, um, I wanted to do this this video because you know it was, this was just shock, such a shock to me to get this kind of quality from from something I wasn't really expecting it from, and it just shows to you know goes to show you you can be wrong and you should be ready to be wrong and you should be ready to be you know delighted um, by something like this. Um, oh, what else do I have to say? So you know I've talked in previous videos about how you know the days of you know granting. Um, uh, easy forgiveness to um, craft distillers in the U.S. Those days are over. You know, back in the day, you know, you used to get credit just for, you know, distilling your own stuff. I mean, if you weren't, you know, buying it from someone else, it was actually yours, even if it wasn't great, even if it tasted like, you know, um, uh, just raw alcohol that had been shot through with, with you know, a ton of oak in as short a period as possible, 
we would give you credit for that because, hey, you're a craft distiller. That's because there was, there was really no other standard to go by other than, hey, you made this. Um, now we have other standards. Um, I feel like, you know, with, with stuff like this, with, um, you know, Cobal's Four Grain, with Fuse Rye, with, you know, a whole bunch of stuff from Balcones, uh, you know, I, I, I could go down a list of, of, of terrific, um, you know, uh, American craft spirits out there um that are sort of show that you know you, you don't need to, to forgive anything anymore like these things are perfectly capable of standing on their own uh and and doing a very good job of it um and so you know this is this is one of the standards now for at least for me at least for my palate and you may all think i'm crazy and say oh, this is you know rough and and you may agree with eric Waite, and i will i will i will understand i think i will understand maybe maybe you know Another possible explanation, maybe they just bottled their best barrels for their sample pack, and, uh, um, and I'm being suckered by having you know, the best possible example of Sonoma, Sonoma's line. So uh, I am planning on buying probably the rye on a, uh, pretty soon. So if, uh, if that sucks, I will make a note down below uh, to disregard everything I am saying right now because uh, I've been suckered. But I don't think so. I don't, I don't feel like that's gonna happen. Anyhow, um, yeah, um, you know, the uh, these these folks, you know, the craft distillers, they're they're real. They're, they're bringing it. Um, maybe they weren't to this level 10 years ago. They are now. Um, and if you aren't taking them seriously and checking them out, then you absolutely should, because they've got something totally different to offer from um, uh, the mainstream guys uh, in wherever they may be. And uh, yeah, that's enough of a rant for me for right now. Um, well done, Sonoma Distilling and uh, Adam Spiegel. Um, I forgive you for collapsing Bear Stearns. You didn't really, it's fine. Um, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I look forward to trying more from you guys. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was informative and uh, cheers.